What's up, guys? It's Tim here with Test Demo. We're back. Now we're going to look at the next uh, part when it comes to object-oriented programming. We looked at part one where we looked at a lot of the introduction to the OOP or object-oriented programming uh, concepts around classes, objects, attributes, inseverances, instantiation, and so forth. Go back and check out part one of object-oriented. In part two, we looked at creating your own methods that you can call within your classes and leverage them when you actually uh, create your objects. Uh, so far through, we're going to look at what's called uh, inheritance. And so uh, let's go ahead and jump into this uh, because this is a pretty uh, pretty cool concept, pretty easy, uh, but it's very profound, profound, and it's a powerful concept that the more you know, the better you get, and the deeper foundations you have to go up high. All right. So looking at uh, inheritance, right, if you think about inheritance, right, just like you have parents, right, a father and mother have children, right, and they have inheritance. Maybe you inherit the, your eyes, uh, the nose features, uh, uh, your skin tone, the lips, your enunciation, your behavior, your personality, your, your gifts, your talents, your interests, your mood, a variety of things, right, we inherit from our parents, right, even animals or plants or other kind of things out there, they inherit a variety of different characteristics from parents. So it's the same thing when you look at object-oriented programming. There's something called the inheritance concepts that you have to be familiar with. So we're going to jump into it. If we, if we, uh, we're going to continue from our code. Again, if you haven't watched part one and part two, I highly encourage you to go back so you can actually know where we are because we're actually just going to keep building on these building blocks going forward. So when we look at uh, our computers class that we created this can be considered the um, base class, or it can be considered what's called the parent class. So when we look at a parent class called computers, we can now create a child class. And again, you can call it whatever you want. And the child class, in this case, we're going to call ours tablet computers, right? So we have our general computer class, and now we have tablet computers, right? Which, in, which, which uh, is a child class, right? And it inherits its objects its methods, uh, its variables from this computer class, right? This computer's class. And the way we write this syntax is exactly what you're looking at here. This is our computer parent class. Computers here is the parent class. Um, and the tablet computers is actually being inherited from this computer class. So again, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a uh, init method. You can have your own init method uh, for this tablet computers. Uh, and in this case, uh, what we can do here uh, we can just do a simple print. Let's just keep it simple for this first example. And let's do a simple print. And we're going to say this is the tablet computer class init method. Okay. Just so you guys can kind of see how this looks pretty, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so let's just uh, go ahead and just start it from here. And we're going to say, uh, let's go ahead and create an ab object. We're going to call it object tablet comp this is going to call the object tablet comp and we're going to say now we're going to make this uh you're going to do uh instantiate the um the object here and what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and point this uh to your computers actually sorry not, not the computers here we're going to actually go and point it to the tablet computers do you see the classes here you're going to go ahead and point that to the tablet computers here. Now, when it points uh, to the tablet computers here, again, keep in mind that this tablet computers is being in, it's inherited. It's a lot of its variables and its, um, its methods from the computers class, right? Uh, so we don't have to actually call it a computers class. We can it inherit uh, from, the tablet com uh, from the tablet computers computers class. Uh, so now what we can do here, we can go ahead and run it. And it should go ahead and print out this is the tablet computer class init method, right? No other fancy code. Right, uh, and you can see it here at the very top. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and print out a print function here, and just do a little demarcation. So we, let's go ahead and print that out again. And you can see it here at the very top. It says this is the tablet computer class init method. So it inherited a lot of its attributes, uh, variables, and objects. Excuse me, methods from this computer's class. All right. Um, but in this case, when we ran it, it went ahead and just ran the init method directly for the tablet computers class. Now, if you want to do something a little more fancy, uh, actually, before we get to that, if you guys notice, uh, you notice here, uh, you can see this uh, kind of this warning. It's not really an error message. It's more of a warning. And it's kind of highlighted with this underscore in white. And if you notice it, when I highlight a hover over it, it says call to the uh, underscore, underscore, knit, underscore, underscore, 
of super classes missed. So what that is saying here is that because this is being inherited from the computer's class, his parents class, or this is also called a super class, it's saying it's saying a hey, you know it's missing this init class, right? Well, um, actually, l let me pause. Let's pause here. Let, let, let me show you guys a few more things before we get there so this concept can really be nailed home. Now, if I go back to my tablet, I do tablet comp and I do dot. Now, if you notice, as soon as I hit this period of dot, notice what comes up here. Notice the methods that are available for me with this from this child class tablet computers. Notice they're inherited from the computers class. And if you notice, remember what we created from the, from the previous uh, tutorial, the start method, which is here. Notice that. The restart method and the shutdown method. If you notice them, because we inherited from the computers class here, it made available the start method, the restart method, and the shutdown method. But the problem is, it, we never made available the init method. And I'm going to show you how we're going to, how you're going to uh, um, bring resolution to that. But let's go ahead and just call this. Let's go ahead and call our start method. Let's go ahead and call the uh, tablet underscore uh, 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 comp dot shutdown. And let's go ahead and call the uh, tablet uh, underscore dot restart. Right. And let's go ahead and print this out. Okay, to uh, to take a look at what we're look, doing here. So when we go ahead and run this uh, uh, program, we're getting this uh, particular error message that says uh, line 31 that table computers object has no attribute name. And if you notice a problem here, is that from our computer parent class, we went ahead and defined self dot name within our init method here. But within the uh, table, the tablet computers uh, parent, excuse me, child class. We don't actually have that defined because when we actually try to call that particular variable or that particular method, we have the self dot name. It's complaining saying it doesn't have a definition for it. It has no clue. It's an attribute error. So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and create an attribute here in this particular tablet's computer's uh, child class. Give it an attribute name, name so to speak, uh, no pun intended. And we can just do the same thing. We can say self dot name, and we can go ahead and set that to name. And now when we uh, come to uh, instantiate the tablet's uh, computer's child class. We just want to make sure, as you can see here, like we did previously, it says the parameter name on field. So we have to go ahead and pass it in. So we can just say, um, we can just call this uh, Microsoft tablet. Uh, we can say Microsoft tablet, okay? And now we should be able to run this, and this should now work. And as you can see it here, uh, when we went ahead and um, instantiated the object and we ran it it printed out this function here this method that says this is the tablet computer class init method which you can see here and now we call the start function but again this start function ladies and gentlemen keep in mind the start function is being inherited from this computer's parent class which was actually defined up here in the computer parent class base method you can see the start class the restart class and the shutdown class uh, shutdown method pardon me so when you go ahead and run it you can see that we didn't define start we didn't define um, restart or shutdown within this particular um, child class but it was already inherited from the uh, parent class which was computers right so we went in and ran it the start method the shutdown method and restart method and you see it here it says starting my microsoft tablet computer it says shutting down my microsoft tablet computer and now restarting uh, my uh, computer uh, there so uh, that's pretty much it as you guys can see uh, from it and now if you mentioned here as you can as you guys can see here uh, with this particular error message and actually the reason you're saying is just saying restart here um, I think we have a typo here might be some issues here uh, but if we go ahead and put that back here and we just do self dot name concatenate that give a space and we're going to run it again you're going to see now it's going to say we start in my here it's going to say we started my microsoft tablet uh computer which was inherited from the computer parent class so now you can see we started my microsoft tablet computer right because we were missing that particular piece of code uh so here like i mentioned earlier you guys see this error message here excuse me on this warning it's saying call to the init of, of super classes missed so like i said computers here which is what what tablets computers inheriting it's uh variables and methods from it's considered the parent class it's also computed the considered the base class it's also computer considered the super class now what you want to do here in order to fix this uh this warning or actually get straightened out it's pretty simple uh what you can do here uh you can pretty much uh just do this uh you can do uh type in computers now you just do computers that 
and you want to go ahead and call the init, right? That init method. You notice as soon as I hit the dot and put in the init um, parameter um, here, uh, you noticed immediately it went ahead and fixed that error. But again, uh, for this, it's saying these are all unfilled. Uh, so again, uh, what you want to do uh, in that particular case, let's go ahead and print it so we can actually see what it gives us here. And you can see it is saying that the missing four required arguments again, because from here we have these four uh, required arguments. And since we're inheriting in it, uh, we need to go ahead and actually define those actual a uh, attributes. Okay, so what we can do here is, uh, like we mentioned, um, in order to um, actually properly define this method with this, within this init class, uh, we can just first of all do this, just take away this name and also go ahead and remove this parameter that we're going to pass here to this particular tablet's objects. And uh, as we did here, we can just go ahead and define or pass some actual ver uh, values for these parameters. You can see it says they're all on field. And if we try to run it, we're going to get the error message saying uh, missing four required uh, positional arguments. Again, it just shows that this init method for this tablet computers class was inherited from this computer's parent class. So we just need to go ahead and pass some methods here. In this case, it's a different way of doing it. We can say name equals, and we can now here call this. Uh, we can just say here, uh, Microsoft, uh, let's see, Microsoft tablet. Okay. And now uh, here we can do color. Same thing. We can just say uh, blue. That's fine. We can just pass a variable. And we can also say operating system, and we can just say, um, uh, let's just say Windows, right? I'm not too, I'm not too familiar with the uh, tablets OS, pardon me. And we can go ahead and uh, let's see here, pass self. Okay, we don't need to pass. We've already passed the self uh, up here with this, uh, this init method for uh, the tablet computer chocolate. So if we run this, this should go ahead and work. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's saying uh, missing one parameter self. So actually, that was actually right. Uh, there we go. Go ahead and pass that. And there we go. And you can see here it says started my Microsoft tablet computer. Same thing uh, here. In this case, we don't actually have to pass the variables here because we've actually defined them here within these parameters. This option of parameters, shutting down my Microsoft tablet computer and restarting my Microsoft tablet computer. One thing I want to show you guys also with the inheritance, which you can also uh, keep in mind is that you can actually have your own, again, methods for this actual child class. And we can just call this... Uh, download uh let's just call this a download app right you can say download download app right and we can just go ahead and pass self and we can say uh we can call this print download tablet apps so when you call this uh, method it downloads the tablet apps so we say download tablet apps and that's pretty much it so here uh what we can do here in this particular case, we can just do, uh, we can just call this, um, we can just create a new function. We can say tablet compute one, and we can pass this to uh, tablet computers. Uh, we can say tablet computers uh, child class, and we can just say tablet comp one. Again, this is a different one. And now we pass that method, and again, you can see all our variable methods. And the cool thing about this here, you can see it makes available the methods here from the computers class, right? We can actually pass from the computers class if we wanted to do that, or we can actually just pass uh, methods in from the tablet computers child class. So in this case, we want to look at the download app. And in this case, we go ahead and download it. It's just going to print that out. You can see download ta tablet apps here. Uh, so I wanted to just uh, run a few of these functions by you with these parent and child class when it call comes to the inheritance. Um, concept of object oriented programming. So I want you to go ahead and practice this, practice, practice. That's the only way you're going to get better. Uh, again, you have to practice to be great and to be good at it. Uh, but to then, don't forget, forget to subscribe to testdemi.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave any comments, and I'll see you, like always, in the next video. Peace. We out. Testdemi.com. Check it out. Holla.